Hi, I am the coordinator of the Finnish chapter of the Zeitgeist Movement, or TZM for short. This video will deal with, the, with science and the, the Zeitgeist Movement. In particular, uh, it will answer to some concerns raised by the, youth, by the YouTuber A Privileged Vegan in her video titled What do I think about a resource-based economy and TZM? Link in the description. The claims that underlie the criticism can be divided into three groups, uh, concerns with science, concerns with ethics, and concerns with the train of thought. This video deals with the first, first part. Uh, see link in the description for the other parts. I tried to find the core assumptions behind the concerns to get to, to the root of the issues. So uh, you will see that those are numbered and written in bold. And some of them might not exactly reflect the details in the original video, but this is only to add more depth to the answers. And before we begin, uh, I have written the claims that were made in the criticism on two slides, which you can read if you wish. I will stop for a moment, so you have time to pause the video twice. This is the first one. And this is the second. Done. Now let's start with the first concern. Uh, since scientists will create the rules, there is an intrinsic tendency for a centralized authority of technocrats. So to, to be clear, this isn't what is said on the original video, but this is the core assumption behind some of the concerns. The rules of the new system that the, the, the Zeitgeist movement advocates uh, will not be so much created as they will be arrived at using the scientific method and the sustainability goals inher inherent to the natural law resource-based economy or NL NLRBE train of thought it is a completely new paradigm which doesn't operate on the same incentives that the current one does. So the first thing we need to understand is the, needs, is the needed paradigm shift in the way we think. Only then can we build a resource-based economy. So just like any social system depends on and actively reinforces people thinking and acting in a certain way, so does uh, uh, natural, natural, natural law resource-based resource economy uh, depend on a new way of thinking, which consists of the understanding that we are one species living on one planet, as shown by science, uh, the need to free humans from repetitive labor roles wherever possible, uh, as has been made possible by science, and the need to live sustainably in all aspects of the term so that we can reverse the current trends of ecological and social disasters and create a world with as little conflict as possible. And this isn't necessarily drawn from science, but is nonetheless integral understanding for this new paradigm. There has been an example, though, on how ethics of this sort could be deduced from science, and I will discuss this in a bit, maybe in another video. So the new social system is built on a new way of thinking, and the actions of those involved can't be assumed to work in the ways they do in today's social system. And before any viewers get ideas about human nature, that is the most common flawed argument we get. And a whole chapter has been dedicated to it in the book, The Zeitgeist Movement Defined, Realizing a New Train of Thought, that you can read for free online. Uh, and in actuality, the train of thought we suggest is in a sense more natural to humans than the capitalistic one. Humans are really adaptive. And to get back to the question, uh, most of the problems currently solved by politics are really just technical problems. In a natural law resource-based economy system, everyone who is qualified to fix technical problems can input to be part of the solutions, and everyone in the resource-based economy gets the best education possible, which is encouraged from an early age. All monotonous work will be automated as much as possible to free humans to do what they wish. Resources will be utilized to make it possible to achieve the highest potential we, as a society, we can have achieve as a society and as it to be individuals as well, as this is clearly a goal for everyone in, a, in an RBE. Second, means of production wouldn't be owned by the majority. 
So the means of production would be automated as much as possible and their use would become integrated in the way humans would interact with the rest of the society. There's really two aspects uh, at work here. So the starting point of, for interaction in a natural law resource-based economy is the CDI or Collaborative Design Interface. The CDI could abstractly be considered the new market, so to say, or the market of ideas and designs. And the second is a Collaborative Design System, CDS. This means that a natural law resource-based economy is not centrally planned. It is based entirely upon public interaction facilitated by programmed open access systems that enable a constant, constant dynamic feedback exchange that can literally allow for the input of the public on any given industrial matter, whether personal or social. Moreover, the actual programming utilized by this interactive system would be available in an open source platform to public input and review. So in a way it shares aspects with direct democracy, but it is, based, it is not based on opinions. So actually the means of production would be shared by all as the common heritage to achieve the common, common goal of creating a sustainable world and to facilitate an access abundance post scarcity world which works for 100% humanity, which includes taking care of the environment that we are a part of, as science and sustainability principles clearly state. There is no need to define ownership, since all needs are met for free for everyone, and there is no extra to be earned by owning things. This is technically possible, and we clearly have the resources, just look at how much we produce and waste in today's society and automation can help to create these things for everybody in an economical way. And why would humans work in this system? They would work because they want to. It's interesting, it's challenging, it's a good way to socialize and have a sense of doing your part. It gives direct satisfaction, not external. So you would, make, you would be making sure, basically, that all the things you value in life keep functioning and are supported. And people know this since it would be thought in schools with the rest of how an, an RBE functions and what one can do to, make it, uh, to take it forward. And to the third question, uh, underlying a lot of the concerns, concerns seem to be the idea that everyone has the incentive to look out for their own selfish interests, which also has to do with the human nature argument. So the paradigm shift in the way we think gets rid of the selfish tendencies we have been thought by the current environment and new generations would adapt to the different set of values. A resource-based economy will be started by people who have learned the incentive to work together and its success will bring others on board. I am confident in this success because it's based on the self-correcting premise of science and that makes it an efficient problem solver and an adaptable social system. Number four, TCM has leaders who will be in control of decisions in the new paradigm. So what you need to understand is that TCM consists of people who have already made this, transi this transition to uh, one extent or, or another and are now helping others with it by spreading knowledge and questioning the ways of the present social system. The point is that leaders are not applicable with the TCM train of thought. Hence, we don't have them, and those who support this train of thought are not going to be leading anything in the, new, in the natural law resource-based economy model we work towards. And as a related thing, uh, see the description for a note about the critique against Peter Joseph. And as a conclusion, and as a useful thing to keep in mind, uh, and, and remember, is to ask questions instead of making assumptions. Uh, just because you don't see how something could work doesn't mean it can't. I, for example, can't understand helicopters, but that doesn't stop them from flying. Be curious and question everything, and this also includes the answers you heard in this video. TCM has an interesting new worldview that is constantly, constantly developing uh, new materials being produced. It, can, it, can be, it really can be one of the most interesting and challenging and even life-changing adventures you can have to try to see the world from the perspective of TCM. I really hope these answers inspire you to do that and give you the sense that the information is out there and encourage you to look for it and build on it. 
uh, if I didn't think that this uh, has the potential to change the world and unite humanity, I wouldn't be doing this. So thanks for watching.